So yesterday, January 4th, officers from the Enoch City Police Department were summoned to 4923 North Albert Drive in reference to a welfare check. Concerned families and friends had contacted police earlier after not hearing from the, the, the people there. Officers entered the residence at approximately 4 p.m. and discovered three adults and five minors deceased inside the home and each appeared to have sustained gunshot wounds. While this intense investigation is ongoing, investigators currently believe there are no suspects outstanding. Evidence suggests that the suspect took his own life after killing seven others in the home. The suspect is 42-year-old Michael Haight. The two other adults in the home were Haight's wife, Tasha Haight, 40 years of age, and Tasha's mother, 78-year-old Gail Earl. The minors were Haight's children. A 17-year-old female, 12-year-old female, 7-year-old female, 7-year-old male, and a 4-year-old male. Now, welfare checks are common, and um, someone uh, with whom Tasha had an appointment yes, yesterday morning called and reported that she had missed the appointment and requested a law enforcement conduct a welfare check. A few hours after that welfare check call came in and, and Tasha was not located, a missing persons report was um, requested and, um, t and uh, was received by Cedar City Police Department due to Michael's office location in Cedar City. Once determined Michael's home address was in Enoch City, the missing persons report was passed to Enoch City officers, at which point um, the welfare check to locate Tasha became an effort to find the entire family. Um, a little bit of ancillary information. It is, it is known um, by court documents that there was a divorce petition that was filed and um, that was made part of the information given to dispatch. Um, crime scene technicians from the Iron County Sheriff's Department, Cedar City Police Department, and Enoch City, Enoch City Police Department worked throughout the night. In fact, um, some of them are still on duty um, to piece together the events and to continue to guess, investigate the details of what happened. In the early hours of this morning, the decedents were transported away from the home, and as part of the investigation, we'll have autopsies conducted by the state medical examiner's office in northern Utah. Now, um, other family members are, have been contacted, of course, before we set any press releases out, and they are well aware of the situation and in having conversations with investigators as we speak. Now, we're, go we're gonna have the mayor talk to you a little bit about the community and give you what's happening right now. And then at the permission of the Iron County School District, uh, Tim Marriott will be talking to you about the resources that, that have been provided there. So, Mayor Chestnut. <clears throat> Good morning, thank you. Um, I am Jeffrey Chestnut, I'm the mayor here in Enoch City. Um, it's not too often something like this hits very close to home. Uh, in fact, the hates were my neighbors, the youngest children played in my yard with my sons. Enoch City is a very close community. Just a few weeks ago, I was mentioning to my wife as I looked at a Zillow app that less than 1% of the homes in Enoch City were for sale. No one wants to leave here. The neighbors are good, the people are wonderful, and the efforts that we make on one another's behalf is like family. I've seen reports that put Enoch as a rural community but you should understand that Enoch is a, a home of lots of young professionals and their families. Uh, our neighborhood alone, 
one cul-de-sac, I think at last count about two years ago, had I think 55 kids in it. So this is a, a tremendous blow to many, many families who have spent many, many nights with these individuals who are now gone. It is unfortunate what we're dealing with, but we appreciate both the respect that the media has shown to this point. Seeing some of the reporting, I know that some information has been available through public documents, and I appreciate the respect that the media has shown to the family and the community to this point. I also am very appreciative of the resources that have been made available to our community. We've had calls from Governor Spencer Cox expressing condolences. I spoke with him last night in the command center and as recently as this morning uh, we received calls and requests or an offer for assistance um, from the National Security Council uh, wanting to make sure that if we needed resources for our community given the scale of this incident that they would be made available. So we in, here in Enoch, a little town of about 7,500, are very grateful to the greater world at large who are mindful of us at this time. And we ask that if you have the ability to, to contribute some resources to help, that is great. Um, and, but at this point, we do ask more that you respect the privacy of the families involved and that uh, we will do our best as the community leaders to give you information through the media that would allow you to have the information you need to do your jobs and, and allow that privacy to be respected. So, um, did you want to say anything? If not, we can take a few questions. Tim, go ahead. Or Tim? Yeah. Okay. My name is Tim Marriott. Um, I am the Student Services Coordinator uh, for the Iron County School District. Um, obviously, this has had a tremendous impact on our schools. Um, we've got some amazing counselors and, and therapists and social workers in our schools that are doing a fantastic job in the trenches as we speak. Um, we've mobilized our crisis uh, mobile response team in our schools, and uh, we've definitely put in our therapists and counselors at those schools that are most impacted by this tragedy. Um, like the mayor said, I've been blown away at the resources that have been offered to us. We've had school districts, we've had county, we've had private cl clinicians that are all ready to jump in, drop everything that they're doing, and come support our students. And that support is just incredible. And that just speaks to the volume of, of the, the community to, that we live in. Um, we recognize that uh, the, the trials and the, the hard times are not going to be done after today. Um, we notice that there's quite a few students that are gone today in their schools, and we recognize that these next several, several days, weeks, months that are coming are going to be difficult for our schools and for our teachers. And I know that our, our community and our therapists and our school counselors, teachers, they stand ready to be that support and that rock for these students to make their day as normal as possible with the difficult things that, that they will continue to face. So again, I'm just so grateful for our schools. Um, and for our administration, and, and they are just really doing a good job and doing the best they can, even though that they are hurting themselves, but they're trying to put on a brave face for our students. Can you know how many different schools have uh, With the, the age range, I believe there would be three schools that were impacted. Uh, is, is it four? Right. So there's, there's an element, two elementary schools, a middle school, and a high schooler. So. And the, one of the preschools, okay. So we've got four, four different schools where the students, uh, the children were attending, so. Is the presumed motive divorce? We don't have, the law, investigators are still working on that. That's the, uh, the information that we had was that there was a divorce petition filed. Uh, that investigation is still ongoing at this point, and so. when was it filed and was it filed by the husband or the wife? Uh, it appears that it was, according to the court documents, it was filed on the 21st of uh, December, and it was filed by the wife. So, some detailed questions. So, who's living in the house at the time? Was it the husband or the wife or 
Who's living in that house? At this point, we don't have the details exactly of that, uh, of the living situation. Uh, we know that her mother was there and had been there uh, providing support uh, through the difficulties that they were encountering. So. And then who was it she was supposed to meet with, can you say, or why was the concern raised for a welfare check? Uh, at this point, the individual who, uh, who, who made that welfare check request, uh, given the investigation, they were still very early in the investigation, uh, were not a, a ready to, investigators would rather not release that information at this point. How long do you think they had been deceased before they discovered? We don't have the official information, but there are witnesses who spoke with members of the family the night before. Have they spoke with members of the family? They spoke, the, the, the daughter and the mother were at a church activity the night before. Wednesday? Uh, yes. Did anyone, like, in the neighborhood hear anything or, or you know, suspect anything was off at this, at this house? In the neighborhood, uh, mo the, the, they're half-acre lots. Uh, big, uh, big homes on half-acre lots, uh, you don't hear a lot coming from your neighbor's homes. So at this point, as I said, we don't have any uh, information that we can release regarding that, but there's nothing that uh, I have had seen any corroborated information on that would give us any indication of that. Had law enforcement ever been to this home previously or had any dealings with this family? Um, yeah, we, we had been uh, involved in some investigations with the family a couple years prior. Uh, you um, at, at this moment, I'd rather not. But but we were familiar with the family, yes. Was there anything recent, or anything that since the divorce papers were filed, was there a protective order or anything? Nothing recent that law enforcement was aware of. No. We appreciate all of you coming. Um, you may have noticed that there's a little quaky in our voices, and a little shininess to our eyes. That's not fear. We're not afraid of you. You all look really friendly and nice people. This is what our public feel. Discussing it, talking to each other about it, brings out these emotions. And it's natural. The expectation is that we're supposed to be tough. The police officers that investigated, that walked through the home, that had to discover the information, had to record the information. They're human beings. They know this family. This is emotion that you see. So really what we're inviting the public to do through you, the media, and through our friends and neighbors and all over the world is if you are a praying person to pray for law enforcement. It impacts them. Pray for the family. If you're not a religious person, care for your family too. Stand with your family. Support them. Love them. Just like we love each other and we love this family. We don't know why this happened. No one will probably know what was going through the minds of these individuals. However, we do know that they were our friends, they were our neighbors, and that we loved them. So we appreciate you. We appreciate the time you've taken to be here. We appreciate everyone who is just lending so much support. Ralph, is this harder because as community comes together, you realize that there was nothing that you could do in this moment? I could ask the media that question, right? I could ask anybody that question, and I think it's, that's a great question. There will be questions that everybody asks themselves, what if I had done this? What if I had done that? Those aren't very good questions to ask. The question to ask is, what do we do now? What do we do going forward? Our police officers are tired. They're continuing to find out answers. They will continue with very little rest. The family members, the neighbors, the friends, 
they continue forward, caring for, talking about this, getting help if they are struggling with it. Resources are coming, as, as Mr. Marriott said. They'll be here for them. Just reach out and get help. Do you, Don't hold it in. Do you know how long the family had lived? You know what, I think, I, I don't have the answer to that question. Those questions are ancillary, and, and I, it's appreciated, and those questions you can probably find out in other resources. So we're going to end is right now. With a suspect that is the weapon was found on site? We're, we're not going to answer any more questions. Um, you can make an amount, you, you can probably deduce some things from the press release, but we do thank you. Was okay. this the same so, community with the Las Vegas shooting incident, uh, the woman that was... That's a good question. We're going to go. You guys can go ahead. <laughs> you know this could go on forever. We're not going to. We've got a lot of things we have to do. But I want to answer that one last question, okay? Yes. Uh, one of the victims of the Las Vegas shooting was a resident here. And um, our hearts go out to maybe some ancillary feelings that that family has. Because this, this is not a good thing. So thank you very much, everyone. And you're free to, to stick around and, and enjoy the room. <laughs>